What's up guys and gals? Today we're going to work on a pen battle 3, 6000. I'm going to show you how to break it down, service it, and reassemble it. All in one video. Amazing stuff. First we're going to start with the spool. We're going to pop that off by removing that knob on top. Just by backing it up. Off it comes. So you flip that open. To access the drags we're going to pop this retaining spring that's inside there. I'm looking for the opening which is on this side it looks like. We'll stick a small flat edge screwdriver inside the gap. Push in and up to release it. Keep your finger over it so it doesn't go shooting somewhere. So we can just pop those out. For the underside we are going to remove the line roller, I'm sorry the the clicker and the line keeper which is right there. I'm going to use a screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver to get those things out. Keep your finger over when you do that because it will spring up on you. Pick that up together. I'll show you the breakdown of all these things in a sec. Line roller, same deal. Just backing that out. To remove it, you're going to take uh, either, you can take a flathead screwdriver or something and you're just going to pull along that edge. Alright, so the breakdown of the drags will be the washer or the drag washer, fiber washer, metal, and that's the stack. For the clicker, you're going to have a bushing underneath there, which is that little piece. The clicker or click tongue sits over it. That springs attached from the bottom or top, it doesn't really matter. Uh, whatever's easier for you is the way you put it in. And then you have the screw that connects it all to, to, the, uh, to the spool. That screw is a little bit longer than the one that's for the line keeper. Where'd it go? The one for the line keeper. All right, so I'm gonna get this cleaned up and what I'm gonna use uh, will, will be some a toothbrush, quite a bit of Q-tips. Uh, for this, I may spray some corrosion or some Saltex on it to break down that uh, that salt water that you see on top there, uh, or may I just stick? I may just stick it into the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, and if I do that, what I'm going to use will be water and dish liquid or dish detergent, just like Dawn or something. I'm not going to use like the purple grease remover, that sort of stuff. I uh, forgot to tell you guys, for the drag washers, if they're good, and they seem like they might be alright. This one might be a little iffy, but we'll check it in a sec. What I'm going to use is brake cleaner fluid. This is the brand that I use, but you can sort of use whatever you like. I'm going to spray that down on top of this. Uh, every so often I may rub it or brush it with another toothbrush, not the same one they're using for the reel. And when this liquid starts to run clear, when I spray it over it, that's when I know it's pretty much clean and I can tell if it's still good or not. If it's bad, we replace it, but this is a good way to save them. All right, see you guys in a bit. All right, welcome back. We're gonna start with the bottom part first and we're going to do the line keeper first. That'll be this piece and that screw. I'm gonna stick a little bit of oil inside there. What I use is Relax. Inside that hole where the screw is gonna go. And now I'm gonna take a little bit of grease Put it to the end of the uh, screwdriver. The grease I use is pen blue grease. Hold on to that for a second. I want to take this piece right here. Notice that hole. Hopefully you can see that right there. I'm going to have that kind of facing up so I can stick this through it. Get it down through the top and then I'm just going to rotate it and as I push. So it's in there. Gently move this over. on back. Gently push that over. You can use some sort of rubber um, ended thing or use your finger to push it over so you don't scratch the the finish on this. Now it's over that screw hole. Take this, stick it straight through and then screw it in. If you wanted to you could add some grease to that hole there as well. Alright so for the uh, for the clicker, I left that intact 
if it came out obviously you can just attach one end to it by kind of popping it in there same deal I'm gonna add a little bit of oil right here I'm in my oil phase so I'm been using oil a lot versus grease or something else that's all you can use whatever you want well something that lubricates the hole and protects it from seizing up inside there take this I'm gonna drop that click tongue over it I'm gonna add some oil around this just like that pop that in looking just like that popping this through and this is a kind of a balancing act but for me it's a little bit easier doing it this way than just kind of dropping it on there so I'm gonna get everything over it angle it find the hole and then just screw it in you can snug it down the entire way now if you want to now I'm gonna take my spring I'm sorry my tweezers and not use my tweezers I'm gonna use this instead pop it over the post right there there's a little slot inside there you want to make sure that spring is is resting inside of it okay so for the drags they were all fine a little bit of wear but they they were still doable I'm gonna use Cal's drag grease and I'm gonna lightly coat all of these you do want to make sure that you coat the entire surface area of it and we're just gonna stick them back in there first one's gonna go that carbon fiber drag washer and then you're gonna alternate one metal washer and then so on to get this retaining spring back in we're gonna take one end angle it down there's a little slot inside there you'll see it on your reel get it started inside there then work your finger around it to get the rest of it seated once it's in there you want to make sure that you check that that spring is all the way around inside the slot that it should be in all right let's go ahead and get to the bail wire the rotor and do all that part um, all those parts I'm gonna take this handle off by unscrewing it backwards and now I'm going to open this up so I can remove that shaft and take the rotor off I'm going to rotate this down towards the bottom somewhere around there uh, before I start just makes it a little easier when we get there now I'm going to do these four screws on the outside plus that one inside the boot to remove that rub guard the screw on the rub guard is smaller than the other four screws you see up there all those four are the same size all right let's go ahead and pop this up out it comes thought that was stuck it's not all right so now i have two screws here that i'm going to remove to take that shaft out first or before i get to the rotor there we see one and numero dos now we can pull that up just like so pop this out uh, I will take the block out, but I'm not going to take anything else out at this point. Now I can undo that screw there to undo that nut. And I will forewarn you that at some point, or as we get along here, this may seem like a jungle to you, and I apologize for that, but I kind of like to keep writing on this paper versus that. Alright, now to the nut. The way to get this off is if you're going to go backwards on it or counterclockwise. You're going to see a washer, or sorry, a bushing under there. That right there. I'm going to take it out and leave it out. To get this off, you simply rock as you pull up. And that's all we're going to do for the housing. Now we're going to work on getting this uh, taken apart. All right, so let's pop out this washer right here. We have a few screws that we're going to uh, just kind of loosen at this point. All right, so first I'll do this side. Pull that off. You can take this, turn it sideways, and pull off. Next, we'll take this one off. Both these screws that you see me pulling out right now, the last one and this one are the same size. So you don't have to worry about mixing them up. I'm going to keep my finger over it gently pull up 
let the load come off of that spring that's under there. And now we can open it up by undoing that screw, moving that cover, and simply lifting this up and out of it. So just two pieces there. And you have a trip arm. That's it for this. Last thing we have to do is the line roller. Under here, you're going to find a few pieces. I'm going to lay this out so you guys can see it. You have the screw, the bail arm. Inside the bail arm, you have a collar or a washer. So looking like that. Hopefully this comes off. And it does, which is really good. Because they have a tendency to get frozen on there if they're not serviced. One bearing. One bushing. Your setup may be a little bit different. If it is, just keep track of where everything came from. Note that that line roller is sloped that way. It'll be facing the bill wire looking like that. And that's all you have for that. Same kind of deal that I did before in terms of cleaning these things up. So after I do that, I'll come back to you and show you how to put it back together. All right, so I'm gonna show you what I do here. The When I tested this bearing, it felt a little iffy. So I'm gonna try to save it and to do that, I'm going to open it up. Notice this is a sealed bearing, but these you can pop off just like any other bearing. There's, there's a little different kind of um, procedure in doing it, but I'm going to stick this exacto knife just gently inside there. Like that. Then it just lifts up. You can see that, I hope. And comes off. I'm not going to put it back on. And for the rest of the steps and how to refurbish bearings, you can check my video library for how I do that. Uh, the bearings are a little bit different, but the procedure is still kind of the same. Now for the other bearings, if there's similar issues uh, to this one, I will do the same thing for them. All right, welcome back. First thing we're going to do is oil this bearing. a couple drops on there and then just work it in now before I jump into this stuff I'm going to add some grease to this bearing so we can obviously protect it from the elements so that grease is going to kind of just work its way inside there mix with the, the oil that I put in there but it also help protect salt water from getting inside there and damaging those bearings or those balls inside there. It looks pretty good. And now we can move on to greasing a few places. One would be inside here. And for the line roller, where you see me adding grease, you can certainly add oil if you want to. If you do a lot of freshwater fishing, then oil is probably the better way to go. But if you alternate between salt water, fresh water, I would stick the grease in there just to add that la extra layer of protection to it. Grease right there. And I'm really kind of jumping around here, so I apologize. Just places that need to be greased, I'm going to grease. I'm also going to do right there where those screw, the set screw will go in, and kind of around there where that plate will sit. Uh, Got some places on there here around that post right there that you see on the bill arm inside there some inside this hole we can do some on the back side as well some inside this hole right here Now I will, I will vacillate between uh, oil there and grease, just that it happens to be grease, that's all. This post as well. In here, and I will tell you, I keep forgetting which one the post rides on, so I just grease both. Someone's had that hole there. And kind of the same thing along this side. 
I'm going to grease where that trip arm is going to ride, some inside there where that spring sits around this post and over the hole. That looks pretty good. Well, some up here as well. Uh, let's see if I missed anything. Somehow I feel like I did, but we'll get there when we get there. We can put some around here. And let's get started. So we're going to do the line. No, we're going to do the bail spring first. Aha. Uh -huh. I didn't grease these pieces. I don't grease the bail, uh, the bail spring, but I do grease the trip arm. And I do grease that pivot arm right there. Especially on the top. And the reason I do this is because this is a kind of metal that just kind of breaks down over time. Uh, I'm not really fond of this setup. I would be if the if this was a little stronger or better protective material, but I always feel like that's going to break off on me. It doesn't. It just feels that way. All right, so we're going to do this first, which is the trip arm. We're going to set that in place. That long arm is going to go facing down, looking like that at the bottom there. I don't grease the bail spring, but you certainly could if you want to. Stick that in looking like that. Then I'm going to rest it over, and that's the setup. It's going to be just under the trip arm. Now I'm going to take this cover, cover it up, and you can screw this in all the way in general. But when I do it, I like to leave a little bit of room at the top. So I'll go all the way to the bottom, but then I'm going to back it out a couple turns. This way there's some play in that, in that cover there. Set that aside, and now we can finish this up. We forgot a bunch of pieces here to grease. Grease inside here where that bushing is going to go. On the other side where the bearing sits. Again, this is all just protection. That is the goal of any, any reel. And around that collar or that washer. On first with the bushing. Line roller looking like this. Sticking our bearing inside there. Now we can put that collar on there. Rest it, and this is where you can do a little bit of a balancing act. I'm going to set it up looking like that. And then I'm going to screw this screw inside. Not going all the way down, but I'm going pretty close to the bottom. When I get to the bottom, I back it up a little bit just to have some play in it. Now I'm going to take this. I'm holding down on this cover here. Looking for that hole. Sticking the point of that into the hole. Then at an angle, I'm pushing and kind of rotating as I go. The reason you rotate is because that trip arm needs to set inside of a channel that's at the top here. If you don't do that, sometimes it's riding too high and it just doesn't set properly. You can feel it when it's in place, and then we can screw it in or secure it with this uh, screw. And I'm going to go all the way down and snug it down. I also snug this down. Don't over tighten it, you might crack that plate or that cover. Now we can take this piece, stick it on sideways, looking like that, turning it down, and then securing that side also. Last thing we have left to do is to tighten this down. You can snug it down. I wouldn't over tighten it. I'm going to make sure that line roller works, which it does. Now I'm going to check the bail flip. Looks good. Now let's move on. All right, so we only have a few things left inside the housing. We're going to start with the top where the pinion is. I'm going to pull this straight up. That stayed behind, but I'll show you what that looks like when we pull it up. If I can get it. That has a spring inside of it with an arm that's bent upwards. That's going to go in looking like this. Uh, like that. Through that little slot that you have inside this trigger. So it looks like that. I'm going to do that clip by sticking a piece or one end of my my flathead screwdriver inside the, one of those gaps and twisting it off. Now I can pull this straight up. 
notice that that flat side is what's facing against this bar right here under there you'll find the spring uh, this that little flat side you see there should te theoretically be over here it really doesn't matter that much when you put this back on because it doesn't interfere with the with this anyhow but if you wanted to know that's kind of where it would sit now I'm gonna do these three screws to get the pinion stack out and pray that it comes out all right fingers crossed huh <laughs> yes always good when it comes out uh, that ramp you can remove and I think I'm actually gonna remove this one because we're gonna do a deep cleaning on this when you start getting into these things you want to keep track of the screws that you're using and where they go because sometimes you might get confused that comes off looking just like that and the last thing we have our last few pieces we have is that um, the crosswind gear which is secured by a screw and the bearing that's inside there you have to remove the crosswind gear first to get that bearing out up up let's pop this out and this little bar right here uh, I may I think I will just kind of leave it there all it is is just a guide for the crosswind block all right, I think that is it. Let's show you the breakdown of the pinion stack. You have the pinion gear, no washers. Thought we had one, but we don't. The bearing, the anti-reverse clutch, this cup with the other bearing inside of it. And I am going to uh, refurbish all three of these bearings as well. Or sorry, all four of these bearings. All right, so I'll see you guys in a bit. Show you how to put it all back together after I clean it up. All right, welcome back. Uh, as you can see, I did go ahead and refurb all these bearings. So since I have them opened up, I'm not gonna cover them back up, even though with these sealed bearings, you can cover those back up. It's not that difficult of a task. I kind of like open, open bearings to begin with anyhow. I also cleaned the anti reverse clutch. So to start with these bearings, what I'm going to do is just add grease to all of them. And now for the anti-reverse clutch, I'm going to add oil. And not a lot, just uh, two to four drops of oil will work. So we have one, two, three, four, and one extra one. And I'm gonna stick this inner race in just to kind of work that in make sure the oil gets uh, transferred all over all right good stuff you'll note on this yeah that's perfect I'm looking at the sheen on the inside or the inner race and that looks really good uh, you'll notice on the inner race there's some indentations they're the same on both si on both sides so you can just stick it in however you want and it should work now I'm gonna take some excess grease here and just kind of work it around to block or just kind of work this oil in, I'm sorry, this grease in, to block any path for uh, salt water to get in. And yes, if you look at this, you'll notice that there's probably a little bit too much grease in there, but what's gonna happen is when you use the reel, a lot of that grease that's excessive will kind of just ooze out. So it's not, it's not a sin to do it this way. Uh, the old way of packing by hand was substandard to begin with anyhow. So, Alright, let's go and do the handle first really quickly. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of oil on the two sides of that pivot and just kind of work that in. You can drop some in here as well. I don't always, but since we're here, we're going to do it. Then I'll take some grease and put it inside there and all around. Then we'll stick some grease in those threads. And 
for the handle, we're just going to add some oil to right there. Then we'll turn the knob to work that in. All right, so for the housing, the first thing we're going to do is add a generous amount of grease inside this wall right here. That's where the pinion stack sits, and we don't want that getting stuck inside. So we are generous with this. Put some inside that hole right there. Some around the post for the block. I'm sorry, for the gear, the crosswind gear. Some inside there. Some along that ramp right there. And I think that's yeah, maybe some around here. We're going to add some oil here as well. And for this side, we can add a very light amount of grease as well. Now, while we're here, we can go ahead and add oil to these holes. Some of these holes are not for screws, but they're for posts. So I still put some inside there. And up here as well. And while we're here, let's go ahead and do it right now so we don't forget this part. All right, so we're gonna start with the pinion stack first. And this is probably the only gears I will show you uh, me greasing. I'm gonna put a light amount of grease on top of these. But what I do with all these gears is I grease the entire surface area of it. And that's because I want protection, so. There you have that. I do also grease the threads up there. And before I forget, I'm going to stick that bushing in there. This one right here, because sometimes I do forget it. Uh, on occasion, I will grease inside that channel where this bushing goes. Uh, no particular reason besides no reason. All right, so let's put this ramp on first, and then we'll get. I'll continue with the rest of the greasing part. I'm just gonna rest it on there. There's one post that goes through this hole right here, and then there's a screw hole on the other side. Snug it down, but over. Don't over tighten this one because you're running into plastic there. And let's continue on with these things. There's a decent amount inside here. That should work. Now don't take this out if you did. If you did take this out, notice that that point facing up is starting from the lower side. There's a thicker, um, thicker end up here versus the bottom. Let's use this instead. Notice the bottom is thinner than the top part. The top part is where that prong sits up toward. But I do add grease to it. When you're done adding grease, so just make sure that that, that uh, spring is still inside the channel. Let's get a little residual grease on that. And I think that's all we're going to do. We've done the bearings already. So we're just going to drop one on. Then on with our anti-reverse clutch. That's key, so you have to rotate it until it drops in place. Second bearing. And now I can pinch these together and add some grease on the outside. This is literally overkill, but when you've gotten as many seized pinion stacks as I have, you kind of get a little paranoid. Drop that inside. I missed our, our cup, so we put that back on there. Drop that in. I'm rotating this until it falls in place because it obviously is keyed as well, just by design. Now we can cover it up and screw it in. Remember, as I said, that flat side goes toward the uh, backup 
dog but if you didn't do it that way it's not the end of the world it'll still work and I have a tendency to put these in all three first versus snugging one the first one down and moving forward because sometimes it'll offset the block or sorry the cover and you won't be able to get the other screws in once they're all in you can certainly snug them down and hand tightening with this screwdriver will suffice you don't need to go extreme on these and now before I forget I'm gonna add some grease to this ramp if you know me you know I have a tendency to wipe it off but at least I put it on to I'll put it on there to start and if I do wipe it off I'll try to remember to put some on when I close the reel up all right so next we're gonna put this piece on or this backup dog on if you look at this spring here you'll notice that the way it's sitting let me hold on to it that's how it's going to be facing up that pronged end will be on the outside so up and like that and that flat surface or this flat end right here will be facing against the housing so just drop it on you want to make sure it goes over the uh, the shoulder in this post right here so kind of looking like that before you put the this piece on I'm going to kind of rotate it until it falls in place I kind of want to have some room for that spring to get over so that's why you see me doing it that way this dog doesn't have a, a point on the bottom that helps keep it in place so what will happen is this will have a piece to keep this from going too far out now we can go ahead and put this e-clip back on there and I like using my I like using my screwdriver so I'm gonna rest it flat against the dog and then push it on like that now we can set these two pieces up I'm just gonna turn it over get that prong going through that hole like I showed you before looking like that and then just drop it down get that point on top of the dog inside that channel and you're good to go now we can go ahead and cover this up let's check our ramp first and it still has some grease so that's good enough rotate that until it falls in place because that's that is also keyed I'm gonna add some grease to my fingers and put some on these pieces here the washer goes on first that is also keyed just like everything is keyed here right I know I get it and yes it is secure with the nut and we don't need to over tighten this but we're going to snug it down pretty good the main goal is to get one flat side facing the two screws where the set screw is going to go same thing in terms of greasing the lock washer drop that over there like that then we're going to screw it in or secure it with the screw all right let's go ahead and get one of these bearings inside here so we don't forget it but like I said you have to put this in before you put the uh, <clears throat> before you put the the crosswind gear in all right now I'm going to grease all these gears and I won't do it on camera it will be the same pre premise as I did for the pinion gear but what I will note here is that we'll put an extra bit of grease inside this channel right here a little extra around that post and I think that's it but we're going to grease the entire surface here like I did for the pinion gear all right and then don't forget there's also that um, those washers or shims that go on the back side but I'll show you that when I come back all right so now on with the crosswind gear first Drop that on. Have that post somewhere towards the bottom. Screw this in. I'll add a little bit of grease on top of it just to protect it. Now we can stick the block on. It'll look like this. Kind of angle it in here. Make sure for that channel it fits over that post. So just like that. Now I'm going to stop right there. Let's grab or a shaft add some grease to the bottom side that's where it's going to interact with the block 
You can sh you can do the, the shaft if you want to. I'm not going to do it on this one. The reason I don't is because that bushing is in there, inside that pinion gear. I do add some grease around here. Stick on our thrust washer, which I took off without you guys seeing. Note that it is there. <clears throat> now I can take this gear, drop it in. Turn until the keys and drops inside where it meshes with the crosswind gear. Note I did take that side off right there, or sort of the cap. And part of the reason is because if you create too much of a, a vacuum, then this doesn't sit properly. And especially with adding a lot of grease around certain areas, that can happen. Now I'm going to take this, stick it through. One of the flat sides need to be facing up. I'm going to hold against the block. As I try to line this up, push it all the way down to where you see the holes lined up, and then secure with the two screws. Snug them down, a little bit of grease over them, stick our shims on there, and now I'm going to stick the bearing on as well. All right, now we can cover it up with the, the side housing. And as I said before, there's one smaller screw that fits over the, the rub guard. And then the four longer screws go on the outside. All right, put the handle on. Now I'm gonna put this cap back on there. Let's go ahead and before we put this on, add some grease inside that little channel right there. That's kind of where the thrust washer sits. And sometimes saw gets in there and just kind of sits and locks this together. So, all right, so let's take this on there. A little bit of grease around this, the threads here. We're gonna test the drag first, and we'll test the crank. Uh, note that the crank will probably probably be a little sl more sluggish than it would be if you use the oil in the bearings, but it should work. So we'll test that part out first. These drags feel okay. They feel really good. We already tested the line roller. Let's feel the crank. That feels good. Anti-reverse works. Let's see the bail flip. There's the bail flip. And the crank is a little more sluggish than it would be if you had oil in the bearings. But the reel itself feels really good. So if you guys appreciated the video, please hit that thumbs up button. If you like content like this, consider subscribing to the channel and spreading the word about it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time.